episode number four of the Cheat Skill anime. And if you're on episode four and you just finished watching this incredible episode and you're not hyped up, jazzed, ready for more, can't believe it ended, if you're not having all these feelings, then I really think the anime is just simply not for you. Now, the reason I'm saying that is I've seen a lot of just um, talk from the community lately about anime stories tending to be the same. And the reality is we live in a world where most mediums are a copy or take heavy inspiration from something else, right? Star Trek took took inspiration from Star Wars, right? We have we have stories like James Bond, Mission Impossible. We have stories like Mashoko Tensei Right, that's a uh, that that is a other world anime, and all of the isekais that followed. Right, we have Sword Art Online as a VR MMO anime, immediately followed up by Excel World by the same creator. That's basically another deviation of that. Right, and these can be done over and over again. Look at Marvel and DC; they're basically parodies of each other, and they both have stolen hero ideas from each other. You know, one that I saw recently was The Flash and Quicksilver from X-Men. Like, these are just things that happen over and over and over again. If you're looking for a Superman, you're going to find another hero over here that embodies that. You know, whether it's Captain America or, or whatever. If you find someone who has a mech suit on one side, like Cyborg, you're going to find someone that has a mech suit on this side, but it's Iron Man. So you're going to see things over and over and over so I just wanted to dispel some of that narrative of, like, it's okay for things to be similar to another thing you like. It's okay for things to be by the books. The main thing that you and I have to really not worry about, but have to, like, really look deep in ourselves is, am I enjoying what I'm watching? Am I having a good time? Am I wasting my time? If it's no, I'm enjoying it. I am enthralled in it. It's compelling. Whatever it is, if I'm having a good time watching it and I can't wait to see more, I, I look forward genuinely to the next episode of it, like, that means it's a good anime. Whether or not it's by the books, whether it's not, it's like, it's a copy of something else, whether or not you've seen nine other anime that have done a similar thing, it's, are you enjoying it? And if the answer is yes, I think that's the most important thing. Now, of course, from a critical standpoint, from a critic standpoint, there are things that you can poke and, you know, and prod in and be like, okay, well, this is, they could have done this better, could have done that better, and I do that a lot. But I think, you know, with this anime, Cheat Skill anime, uh, it reminds me just honestly, it reminds me of the anime we just had last season, Eminence and Shadow, is like if I get really nitty gritty, I can find things that are like critical standpoints. And I'm not by any means saying that Cheat Skill is like a 10 out of 10 anime. I think it's like an 8 out of 10 anime. It's re But 8 out of 10 is like really, really good. If you look at my anime list or anime ratings or different things, you'll see that some of your favorite animes probably are like a 7, a 7.5, a 7.7, a 7.2, a 6.7 at best, you know? So I think this one being an 8 out of 10, like, yeah, this is really, really good. Now, this episode specifically, it did a few different things. Uh, one, I love the duality of... And you can really feel how complicated it's going to get for Yuya. But I love the duality of... This other world, you know, this, uh, you know, this other fantasy world that he can go go into, and in the real world, this duality of both of these worlds in parallel, uh, I really hope that they go down the difficulty that he's gonna really face by trying to manage these two worlds, especially if he tries to manage like a love life, or a job or anything, because in the other world, it's a fantasy world, he's probably gonna, you know, he has to go meet the king now. He was just proposed by the princess of the land. He's probably going to be given some kind of knightship or position or uh, power or money. He's going to be given something in that world uh, for a couple of reasons. One, he saved the princess and her guard twice. And two, the princess is infatuated with him. So those are two reasons why he's going to be given knighthood. Uh, so he's going to be given some kind of position over here in this world so to, to give him some kind of power. But then on this other world, he just got into Osai Academy. He's a, he's a, he's a student. 
He has a girl he's interested in over here. He has a life that he wants to do. He's getting into modeling. We haven't even gone down the path of the model agencies beginning to ravage and try and get him to his side. So potentially, he's going to have a school life, potentially a love life, and potentially a career in Japan. So he's going to have to, like, it's going to be horrendously difficult to manage these two lives in in both of these worlds. And eventually, they're going to coincide. This episode, we got a little peek of it. Again, uh, the princess comes. She says, marry me. They decide to just start off as friends because love is complicated. So she's like, let's be friends first. And uh, he wants to be seen by the king. Apparently, it's a five-day trek to go to the kingdom, okay? So that means that, A, that princess traveled twice five days out uh, just to go see this man. Well, she traveled once. The other one, who knows why she was there originally. But uh, there's a five-day travel by horse or whatever to get to the to the kingdom. And he literally, he was like, oh, shit. I have, I have, uh, I have Golden Week coming up. That's it. That's Golden Week, you know, in Japan, that's time off. So he's going to have like a spring break, essentially. So he has to plan this visit to the king around his time off. So you can already see that being a little bit, you know, stressful, okay? So we have that. Uh, the other things that I want to talk on here with the, the other things is we learn where his house is. He lives in the demon territory, the great demon territory. So at some point, I wonder, like, who's the demon lord? Is he going to meet his? Is there a demon lord? Is there a great demon who's the leader? But the fact that he lives in the great demon tory, or demon tory, wow. The fact that he lives in the great demon territory is pretty crazy in itself. Uh, and that, that makes for a very interesting thing. Uh, he has a home out there. He takes them, he takes the princess and the guard to his home. I think that was a dumb move, but hey, regardless, he did that, okay? So he takes them to his home. And then we get all of the stuff with uh, the, the, the princess. Then we find out a little bit later in the episode, that the princess wasn't just there willy-nilly. She was being assassinated. Uh, we find out that there is apparently a prince or a king of some kind that was uh, coordinating her assassination, and he's now extremely pissed that uh, he failed, and uh, he's going to take it out on whoever his subordinates are. But I don't know if he's a king of another land. He seems to be holding some kind of animosity towards Lexia, which is the princess, and... That's probably going to be a very interesting timeline. Okay, now we're back at the Academy, and uh, we get to see him. Th my concern with Yuya so far is we get to see him show off a bit because he's not really used to his power, his new self, his new looks, uh, but I think he's doing too much. He jumped out of a fourth-floor window. He did some superhuman move to kick a ball to save a girl. That was probably okay. He jumped like 12 feet in the sky. That's probably not a good idea. Uh, he did save his little brother and sister, you know, even though they were the ones who brought a bike gang to the school and they caused a bunch of damage and property damage and stuff. Idiots. Uh, but he did save them. So, he, you know, he, he, did, he has some good things, but he's showing off too much. And it makes me a little worried because, like, you can't just suddenly – you're not superhuman. Well, you are, but you can't be – you can't portray yourself that way because that invites a lot of problems – especially governmental problems, too. Uh, so he needs to hold back a little bit, and I think that he's not in a good position if he continues to show off too much. But the good things is he was able to get revenge on the, on the bike gang that uh, mistreated him before. He was able to get back on his brother and sister's good graces by just simply being kind and not abandoning his family, even if he knows they're pieces of crap. Uh, he, he got to show off in front of two different girls, one that obviously likes him, which is Kaede Kazuma, He's a, she's the one that he saved from the from the ball. And then we have our main girl, uh, which obviously is in love with him too. And then we have the the other girl too with the blue hair. I think he's she's gonna be in the in that love interest as well too. But he saved our our uh our main girl as well. And I cannot remember her name for the life of me. Uh and I should. But uh we have our main girl that he saved as well. Uh and she is uh Kaori. So we have our main girl as well that he saved. So that's all good. So my, my worries are just him showing off too much. And then how is he going to balance that world and this world? Uh, you know, regardless, I can't wait to see more. I can't wait to see when the model agencies come into play again. Uh, overall, a fire episode. I would say easy 9 out of 10 episode. 8 out of 10 overall. Really enjoyed it. But what did you think? Let me know in the comments down below. If, I, if my voice sounded even more annoying than usual, guys, I am 
dying from allergies over here, so apologies for if I'm even more nasally than usual. Uh, I might sound 11 instead of 14 like normal, so apologies. Uh, but regardless, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. As always, I appreciate you guys being here. Give me a big old, give me a big old fat ass like before you guys dip out. And of course, uh, I look forward to talking to you guys in the comments. All right, peace.